Oh, okay. Okay, let's go. Well, good morning and welcome to Midweek Connection at First Presbyterian Church. My name is Pastor Joel and this is David Welch, our seminary intern. And uh, we're trying something new today because of technical concerns in the sanctuary, but maybe we'll just have a, uh, a different way today that we can look at God's Word together and uh, hopefully be encouraged and inspired by it. Let me open this in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity that you give us to read your word and hear your word. I pray, Lord, that we would be transformed by your word, that our hearts would uh, be open to you and to the love that you bring. We thank you for this time, and we pray that, uh, that you would be glorified in all that we do and say. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I'm going to start this morning with Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord, give heed to my sighing. Listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice, in the morning I plead my case to you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil will not sojourn with you. The boastful will not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful, but I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness, because of my enemies make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouths. Their hearts are destruction. Their throats are open graves. They flatter with their tongues. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels, because of their many transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice, let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, so that those who love your name may exult in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover them with favor, as with a shield. Our next psalm is Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. For they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Our next text is from Genesis chapter 42, verses 18 through 28. On the third day, Joseph said to them, Do this, and you will live, for I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers stay here where you are imprisoned. The rest of you shall go and carry grain for the famine of your households, and bring your youngest brother to me. Thus your words will be verified, and you shall not die. And they agreed to do so. They said to one another, Alas, we are paying the penalty for what we did to our brother. We saw his anguish when he pleaded with us, but we would not listen. That is why this anguish has come upon us. Then Reuben answered them, Did I not tell you not to wrong the boy? But you would not listen. So now there comes a reckoning for his blood. They did not know that Joseph understood them, since he spoke with them through an interpreter. Joseph turned away from them and wept. Then he returned and spoke to them, and he picked out Simeon and had him bound before their eyes, Joseph then gave orders to fill their bags with grain, to return every man's money to his sack, and to give them provisions for their journey. This was done for them. 
They loaded their donkeys with their grain and departed. When one of them opened his sack to give his donkey fodder at the lodging place, he saw his money at the top of a sack. He said to his brothers, My money has been put back. Here it is in my sack. At this they lost heart and turned trembling to one another, saying, What is this that God has done to us? Our New Testament epistle reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9, through chapter 6, verse 11. I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral persons, not at all meaning the immoral of this world, or the greedy and robbers, or idolaters, since then you would need to go out of the world. But now I am writing to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of brother or sister, who is sexually immoral or greedy, or is an idolater, reviler, drunkard, or robber. Do not even eat with such a one. For what have I to do with judging those on the outside? Is it not those who are inside that you are to judge? God will judge those outside. Drive out the wicked person from among you. When any of you has a grievance against another, do you dare to take it to court before the unrighteous instead of taking it before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try trivial cases? Do you not know that we are to judge angels, to say nothing of ordinary matters? If you have ordinary cases, then do you appoint as judges those who have no standing in the church? I say this to your shame. Can it be that there is no one among you wise enough to decide between one believer and another, but a believer goes to court against a believer? and before unbelievers at that. In fact, to have lawsuits at all with one another is already a defeat for you. Why not rather be wronged? Why not rather be defrauded? But you yourselves wrong and defraud, and believers at that. Do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, male prostitutes, sodomites, thieves, the greedy, drunkards, revilers, robbers, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. And this is what some of you used to be. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the Spirit of our God. Our Gospel reading today is from Mark chapter 4, verses 1 through 20. Again, Jesus began to teach beside the sea. Such a very large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat on the sea and sat there while the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. He began to teach them many things in parables, and in his teaching Jesus said to them, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil, and it sprang up quickly, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Other seed fell into good soil and brought forth grain growing up and increasing and yielding thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And he said, Let anyone with ears to hear, listen. When Jesus was alone, those who were around him along with the twelve asked him about the parables. And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything comes in parables, in order that they may indeed look but not perceive, and may indeed listen. But not understand, so that they may not turn again and be forgiven. And Jesus said to them, Do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. Those are the ones on the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. 
And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy, but they have no root and endure only for a while. Then, when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are those sown among the thorns. These are the ones who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, and it yields nothing. And these are ones sown on the good soil. They hear the word and accept it and bear fruit, thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. Our third psalm is Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I see. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger, you who have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God, of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Our final psalm today is from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you, Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise, for you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good in Zion in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. 
Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Well, this is a, a new setting for us, and, and David, it's, uh, it, it's fun to be on camera at the same time as we read and listen to God's Word, and I do appreciate the way that you read God's Word with passion and intensity, uh, and, and I do like the ways that you have been uh, available to share your insights and, and your study and the way the Holy Spirit speaks through you, so I'm glad that we have this chance to do this today. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about, just in terms of having read these various texts to us, so much of what I heard and, uh, and, and was thinking about in terms of the complications that Joseph and his brothers were facing, the, uh, the difficult passages that, uh, from Corinthians that Paul writes, is, is how does the community of faith interact with one another? How do we... Uh, listen to what God is sharing with us, and then how do we respond in faith as we live in community? Now, if you remember the story from Genesis, Joseph obviously had been thrown into a pit by his brothers and then sold into slavery, and all of the, uh, the, the tragedy of his uh, time in Egypt up until the place where God brought him out of his uh, position of slavery and into a position of authority. And then when his brothers appear before him during that time of famine, how does Joseph respond to his brothers? And Joseph was in a position to extract revenge upon them. There would have been nobody in Egypt that would have resisted Joseph repaying his brothers in kind for the evil that they had done to him. Instead, Joseph shows kindness to his brothers. He does put them to a test. It's an interesting, dramatic uh, 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 situation that we find ourselves in. But Joseph ultimately then loves his brothers and, and has the opportunity to reconcile to them. We see, though, from that uh, Corinthians passage that was read how even in the church, uh, Paul writes to people who believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, he's writing to people who are a part of a community together, and Paul has to correct them for the ways that they are mistreating each other in their community, uh, whether that is inappropriate behavior, uh, talking about you know sexual sins or drunkenness or even getting to uh, lawsuits amongst believers and how it, the, the, what kind of a witness would that be to people who don't believe in Christ if the community of faith is mistreating each other um, and, and taking advantage of one another and abusing one another? Um, but towards the end of that passage, we get that wonderful statement of faith where, where Paul reminds the Corinthians that there are certain people or certain behaviors where those people will not be able to inherit the kingdom of God. But Paul reminds them that's how they used to be, but they were washed and they were sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. So it's an encouraging passage for all of us, all of us who live in imperfect communities, because there is no perfect Christian community. They just don't exist because Christian communities are composed of not yet completely perfected people. Mm. Uh, Jesus is calling us towards perfection. He is calling us, uh, uh, as, we, as we read in, in Psalm 51, he is he's calling us to be repentant. He is saying that the broken spirit and the contrite heart are what God uses to work in in order to create clean hearts within us. Uh, and so as we confess to one another, as we... Uh, um, are increasingly obedient to what God is calling us to do, uh, then ultimately God restores right relationships, uh, not just between God and humans, but between each other in community. And so as we, uh, as, we, as we continue to read God's Word, as we continue to think about the ways that He has transformed our lives individually, remember that He is calling us to live transformed lives in community with one another. Um, it's a really good thing for all of us to have our 
quiet times, our devotionals, um, our times even of, of individual worship and, and bowing down before the Lord, all of those are important and good and should be practiced by everybody. But ultimately within community is where we experience a, a, a different side of God's completion of love, that he is calling us uh, to be reconciled with him and with each other. So as good as our own individual uh, devotional practices might be, if we are not practicing uh, worship with one another, if we are not practicing forgiveness of one another and healing for one another and, and, and caring for one another uh, in the midst of our ongoing brokenness, then we're, we're missing out on a lot of the blessings that I believe God wants us to enjoy. And so uh, that's, uh, that's my message uh, to you all today. Uh, David, is there anything that you wanted to add to that? Um, uh, sh sure, I think, um, I, I think as I'm reading the first Corinthians passage, I'm reminded that uh, during this time of Lent, we, uh, we think about we, we usually think about the ways that we've uh, maybe sinned against God or, or not been good Christians or, or, you know, or we give up things uh, for God's sake. But I think Lent should also be a time when we, uh, we repent for what we've done to one another and when we reconcile with one another, uh, because ultimately that, that is, um, that, that is, uh, an important piece of our relationship with God. Uh, if we don't love one another, we can't say that we love God. Uh, if we don't make peace with one another, uh, how how can we uh, expect God to, uh, to forgive us and, and make peace with us? He, he came not just so that we could have peace with him, but with one another um, and to, to create a community characterized by love and, and by grace. Uh, so this Lent, I would encourage you to think, uh, who are the people that I need to reconcile with? Uh, even if they haven't done what I think they should, even if I've been wronged, who are the people that I need to, to try to reconcile with? Hmm. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, everybody. Well, uh, I, I'm glad that we have the opportunity to be here again today. And uh, as, as David was saying, during this Lenten season, let's be mindful of the ways that God has loved us, that we can then love other people. So I certainly hope that you will continue to join with us uh, during our midweek connections. And certainly uh, during our Sunday worship service, uh, we do worship at 1030 here in the sanctuary. You can watch online at different times. Uh, and certainly if you have any questions or concerns or prayer requests that you can call up to the church office and We'll be happy to listen to those and pray with you. So let me go ahead and close this in prayer. Uh, gracious Lord, we are thankful for your word to us. We are thankful, Lord, that those who take refuge in you can rejoice and that you will sing forever for us. Lord, that you spread your protection over us and that we who love your name can exalt in you. Lord, thank you for being our shield and our favor. Thank you for being the God who knows us and loves us and cares for us even more fully than we would ever know. Lord, um, forgive us for the ways that we do fall short. Uh, and Lord, as we look around this world and we see uh, so many evident um, expressions of, of, of just anger and hatred and uh, uh, inhumanity and cruelty and chaos, um, Lord, we are grateful that you are a God of love that you are a God of holiness, that you are a God of forgiveness, and that ultimately all of the um, difficulties and problems that exist uh, amongst humans in general, and those specifically that uh, exist even amongst community, communities of faith, that you are a God who is working to glorify yourself uh, and, and raise up the name of Jesus Christ in our lives, that we would be transformed into people who more fully follow after you. So, Lord, for the innocent people, we pray for protection. Uh, for the wicked people, we pray that their wickedness would, uh, would be put back upon them. Uh, but, Lord, we trust that you are the God who is going to work all things for your good, and for, for your glory, and for our good. We thank you and we praise you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody. Have a blessed day. Take care. Bye-bye.